to share something that's going to be really powerful for basically any area in your life that you wish to evolve and work on and transform in. So I want to talk a little bit about psychology, the way your psychology works. This is really how your brain is programmed, how habits and behaviors are formed, and then how to reprogram yourself, which is essentially what you're doing when you're taking you know, any course or changing any behaviors. You're reprogramming something. So the way that you are interacting with yourself and the world is based on your beliefs, what you believe to be true about the world or yourself. And this is often unconscious. You don't realize you're really having these beliefs and driven by the beliefs. But they're strengthened through the way that we interact and what we are focusing on. So we continue to play out these programs. So these programs are running because of these beliefs. And they continue to be strengthened in a certain way. When we understand how they're strengthened, we can understand how to weaken those and strengthen the new programs and beliefs. So we have adopted ways of being based on beliefs that we learned from some point in our lives, generally when we were very young, when we were children. And they could be from an actual experience or something that we were told or taught. You know, we learned something about the world or about ourselves. So based on that experience, that changes or rather impacts how we interact in the next experience we have. We interact with the world through that lens, through that belief. And then through that interaction, that strengthens the belief. We also are able to focus, or maybe um, a better word is to pay attention to and acknowledge the things that strengthen that belief. This is called confirmation bias in psychology. So we are more adept to notice things in our lives that strengthen the beliefs, even if the beliefs are unhealthy for us. Why? Because our beliefs are attached to our identity, whether we know it or not. And if we are looking to strengthen our identity, if we are holding very true to this identity in attaching to it, then our beliefs are part of that and we need to um, basically defend the beliefs and strengthen the beliefs. And this is happening unconsciously. So because it's all wrapped up in our identity, the brain is naturally looking for ways to prove that these beliefs are true. Here is an example of communication. I'll give you a straight example of how this works in communication. So as a child, you were told to be quiet or to shut up. You weren't really listened to when you were sharing. So you adopted the belief about yourself and the world that your voice isn't important. So the way that you interact with the world then is from that belief. Interaction could be you don't speak out for yourself because you don't believe your voice is important. You're used to not then speaking out for yourself. And it's strengthened through that. You're strengthening that belief because you're playing it out as well as moments in interactions. You will notice more the times where people are not listening to you than you will notice them listening to you because you are proving that belief. You're proving that your voice is not worthy of being heard. So you're noticing what that belief is. You're noticing that play out. See, they're not listening. See, that person's just looking away. See, they're not present. See, that's what your brain's doing, strengthening that belief. So the way to work with this programming is realize that it's not just about changing your belief. Like, this is my new empowering belief, and then you're done. I'm sorry, it's not how it works. I wish it were as easy as just writing a new belief down and then you're set. But no, why? 
because your beliefs are being strengthened by your actions and by what you're noticing, what you're proving. So you have to work on your actions and what you're noticing in order to really shift your programming. It is not enough to just work with your beliefs. So the way you'll do this, again, the same example of the communication is if your old program was your voice is not worthy and you want your new program to be my voice is valued, then you'll hold that as the new belief running the program and then you'll act upon it. So you'll take the opposite action to what you were doing before. You will speak out. Here is the kicker. Most people think that in order to change their behavior, they work with the belief and then the belief will get them to a place where they feel totally confident to then go and speak out and then it'll all be easy. That's not how it works. You actually have to do like the hard work of going and speaking out and having confidence to do that. Confidence doesn't imply that you're not afraid. It implies that you have courage within that. So it requires you to, like, the gears have been turning one way, not speaking out. There's well oiled going in this direction. It's easy. You actually have to, like, turn the gears the opposite way. You have to be in a circumstance where you are not interacting with the world in the same way, and it's going to feel unfamiliar, weird, uncomfortable, until it doesn't. Reprogram really does not feel super easy in the moment you're running the new program because it's a new program, it's weird. It's not practice yet. So in this case, you will find experiences where you can speak out more. You'll put yourself in that practice so that your experience can start to strengthen the new belief and you will be keenly aware and take notice of things that you can prove the new belief to be true. The difficult part in this is that unconsciously, you're already proving the belief, the old belief. Unconsciously, that happens. You don't even have to like consciously take notice. You're already unconsciously noticing, proofing that, oh, see, look, they're not listening, they're not listening. When you're strengthening the new belief, you have to actually put a lot of attention into noticing the things that can strengthen the new belief. So whenever someone listens to you, see they're listening, they have eye contact, see? They ask you a question, see they're interested in what I have to share, see? So you'll put conscious attention onto proving the new belief. You'll have to use that, that energy of your brain to really notice that, but eventually the more you do this, the more that will become the new program that will run on its own. Naturally then, your brain will be looking out for ways to strengthen that healthy belief because that healthy belief will be then your identity. I'm going to give you another example in terms of relationships and the idea of anxious and secure attachment. Maybe um, many of you already know this theory of attachment in terms of relating. So if you are anxiously attached, again, that may have been created when you were a child from abandonment issues or people not being present or mistreating you when you were very young. And that has later come into your experience of anxiously interacting with, let's say, a intimate partner. So you feel very afraid of them leaving you. Um, it's difficult for you to feel confident and trusting in the relationship. So what will happen is your brain will naturally notice the areas where it will prove the belief to be true. So the belief might be they're going to leave me. So you'll notice moments where they're maybe a little bit more quiet around you. And naturally your brain will be like, see, they're gonna leave me soon, they're really quiet. Or they'll be really late one day. See, they don't care. They're gonna leave me. Look, they were just late. They don't care about me. So the way that you would work with this is you would put yourself in situations where you're expressing secure attachment, not anxious attachment. So maybe before you were expressing your anxious attachment through constantly messaging them all day, every day. 
So you would work with, okay, this person, our relationship is secure. That's the new belief. The new action would be stopping yourself when you're going to message them all day, every day. Stopping yourself. And it's going to feel weird. You're going to be like, no, I don't want to. I want to message them. Stop yourself. Then also work with what you're noticing. When they come and hug you, when they be affectionate to you, when you're laughing together, actually notice, file that away in your brain and be like, our relationship is secure. They want to be with me. They're having fun with me. We are grounded together. Pay attention to that. This is really the way to reprogram your beliefs, your behaviors, 